Hello everybody, happy holidays, and welcome to PyMega 3.0. We've worked very hard, and as you can tell by the high quality of my wrinkly curtain behind me, we went all out on the video production. Before you go and skip or stop this video just to click the download button, hold on just a second. A lot of work has went into this. This video is now divided into chapters, so feel free to skip along the bottom in a second. There's some things that have changed. So you're gonna wanna at least stick around through the introduction and the setup functions, because some stuff has changed. There's a readme in your archive. There's a readme on Scalos desktop. There's also a readme in the Linux desktop when you finally quit Amaberry, and you're not gonna read it. So I figured I'd just touch base with you right here Dr. Chris, to you guys out there, and if you want to hang around, that's wonderful too. Final thing before you go skipping, or stick around, appreciate it. There is a button down there with a big Superman symbol and an S dollar sign. If you like PyMega and it really is enjoyable to you, or even if you hate it, feel free to toss a couple bones. PayPal donations work the best for me, but Super Chats are wonderful also. I thank each and every one of you guys for hanging out with me for another rendition of Pi Amiga. And this one is really cool because it's got some really neat stuff in it. So here we go. And I hope you enjoy. And happy holidays. That's reminiscent of the 90s, isn't it? Like my poster, the guy's got me. Merry Chris Mess. And happy holidays to everyone in 2022. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Chris Mess, because this is always a mess. All right, so welcome back. I'm gonna plop myself down here in the lower right corner. How are you doing? Because I'm out of the way of the dock bar right here. So all this stuff to your, to my left here is the new dock bar. It's called Dock Bot. It's from Aminet. Anyway, it's not perfect, but it works for what I'm doing. Now, I went over this in the prequel video, so I will go over it briefly again. I also forgot one thing in there. Starting from the right to the left. On the very right is, of course, iGame. What you guys mostly play Pi Amiga for is games. They're the latest pack from Zeb. Super WHD load pack. And it has games and demos and all sorts of stuff in there. It's really cool, and that's what I use for Pymega. If you would click on a game and right click on it and go to properties, and if I wanted to put this game in here, I could say favorite, okay, and then if I go to favorites, there's that game. Just like every WHD load setup, nothing's perfect. There's a weird thing I'm gonna show you, and this is because this is X on top of the X window system. If I do like a pinball fantasies, and I go, now they're FNTS, whatever. I'm just going to go with this AGA one. Sometimes it'll just work, right? Sometimes you're going to get this weird integer divide by zero. But if I just click restart, it works. So just keep that in mind. There's also a lib exec error. It just happens. There's something to do with Zorro 3 RAM mapping differences on a graphical over... Some science is happening. Just click restart and you'll be good. The little film reel here is iDemo. It's the WHD load repository of demos. Favorites, my personal favorites, all of them. There's like 998 or something like that. Eagle player. I have mine set on DJ Collins. Eagle player's there. There's about 4,000 plus mods this time. I like the old music mods and I like the demos. That's my thing. Next to that is the Riva MPEG player. 
I only left the Amiga song from Eric Schwartz. You have the Amiga song to show the content. Because of Chrome and Firefox, you're going to be watching YouTube anyway, and you don't need the MPEGs. If you want them, grab them from a previous release. Next to that is Amiga Amp. Every year I put a new selection of MP3s, starting off with, you know, Shapeshifter. Now you're going to notice I'm single clicking on the dock bar and just hit start. That's very important for Shapeshifter. Single click, because if you double click, it's gonna screw up JIT and turn it back on, and that's gonna cause an FPU error on Amaberry, and then your stuff's gonna be weird. It's up, it's running, mouse works fine. You can see I can just jam along and everything's cool. I'm not gonna get in that too much. When you're done, choose special and then shut down. Next to that is a simple find, commodities exchange, the EMU control, and then directory opus, file manager. Next to that is mounter. Uh, loads, ADFs, ISO, HDF, SMB mounter, Rob Cranley. Just click edit here. You can fill this out or make a new one and copy this to suit your needs. You've seen, I use it on my real Amigas and I use it on Pi Amiga all the time to get to my SMB 1.0 network shares. Remember, this is 1994. Next to that is the multi archive unpacker. This is term just like Pi Amiga. 2.0. If you right click at the top and go to phone book, you'll see there is a boatload of BBSs. These are all still online. Reign of Fire, Second Coming. Uh, some of the ones that people have wrote into me to have included. Frontiers, Future World, my own ADI. That's me. Uh, when you're done, you can enjoy that and it takes you back in time. Next to that is a web, typical Amiga browser. Now here's the fun part. One click, okay? One time, click on this, you're gonna get two cursors on your screen. What in the good word is that about? Remember what I told you in the demo. Uh, Gallo, since it's a workbench replacement, run on planar graphics. The whole Amiga computer system was planar. Pieces of paper, right? Linux is sitting back here. Amaberry's here, Scalos is right here. So what we're doing is we're taking the Linux app and we're slapping her to the front. Basically, it's alt-tabbed right to the front. Gives you the feel that you're running a browser on the Scalos, a.k.a. an Amiga, but you're not. Now, many of the other uh, emulation alternatives for Amiga, Amicit X, they call this term rabbit hole. They coined that term. It's called Host Run. It's from Midwin. Links in the description below. Midwin, the wonderful creator of Amaberry. Let me stop this. Now this will watch 1080p all day long, 60 frames per second. You can flop this into full screen. And there you go. You could watch this no problem. Dr. Chris intro. Now I have some pre-selected favorites like Midwin's page for Amaberry, the emulator that all of this is running on, and pretty much every single emulator for 68K uses Amaberry, including your A500 Mini, by the way. Did you know that? Uh, Google, of course, HTML5, CSS, all the certs, Amiga.org, Aminet, of course. Put a little plug for myself in there, or Chris Edwards Restoration. The WHD load page, you're going to be using this a lot. Now, here's something cool. Uh, this is an older one, but if you click this, right, user small, it's just going to download. You see that right here? Great. When you're done, close it. Check this, check these buppies out. Go into directory opus, and if you go to the temp directory, oh, that's tiny for me. That's what she said. There you go. WHD load small. Unpack that bad boy to RAM. You just downloaded something with Chrome to Scalos on Pymega using opus. You just unpacked a modern file. There, there's our WHD load download. I always double click and quit it. Awesome sauce. So that's that. The final icon, of course, single click is Firefox. And we got the sound all sorted. And I'm gonna go over some cool stuff with you here real quick. I know you guys don't give a crap about anything but games. The temp folder here is a visual representation of all the stuff that you downloaded from either Chrome, Firefox, AWIB, or any of the other internet browsers like Eyebrows. Eyebrows used to crash a lot, and now it doesn't. You just launch Eyebrows. It's the demo. There you go. Demo. You got 20 minutes to screw around with it. 256 as of December 2022. 
There was a problem that one of the beta testers found out that when the cache directory is set to RAM, it would crash to Linux on startup. So you could fix that on 2.0 if you're still rocking that old one too. Switch the preferences for cache to just slide her down to zero. Don't need it. Got all that RAM up there. Now, that's just some internet programs, some general programs. we got all the audio programs. I went through every single solitary window and folder on this entire build. Every demo was tested. Every demo was set to show all files. So you can click on here and don't be like, it's an empty folder. You can watch whatever you want. She's going to run it. If you're going to be running lots of demos, reboot. Now, I'm a big Black Lotus fan. So, like, <laughs> Rift, one of their latest ones, just double-click it. There you go. This is Rift from the Black Lotus. Wonderful demo. Runs full speed. No problem. And this is a stock clock. I'm not overclocked. No hesitation. Nothing. Sounds perfect, too. Works wonderful. And you can continue browsing whatever you want. This new folder of Fulgore's Top 200 Demos are a personal favorite of one of our beta testers. You can blast through them and see every demo that they have set up and all the stuff ranked. Some dupes, some new. The Amiga demos are, again, same as 2.0, 48K, 4K, 64K, Cracktros, additional EXEs, music disc, discs, mags, and distros. There's a lot of demos in there and they got some weird names sometime so if you have a long weird file name just right click on it choose rename and then it'll launch off for you if you don't need them just nuke this whole folder whd load don't touch because that's i demo you're missing an audio drive chris what happened to all that audio stuff well audio has always been in system audio but the old Drive had the old stuff for the AIX and the Digibooster and the MIDI and the MP3s and the mods were all on the audio drive. So to save some space and kind of compress her a little bit, coding, y'all that like to do the old programming stuff, got a bunch of stuff in there to tickle you. Um, fractals, same with that mathematical generation of Mandelbrots and other graphical cool things. Pretty neat. The graphics programs. Now, Amipro, Forge, Lightwave, went all through these. Enlisted the help of the old Hold Modify Master himself for the Lightwave. Even put this thing in there called Assigns. So you can double click on Assigns and then you can launch Lightwave and it just, it just works. It's just like butter. I have no idea how to use this program besides what I've learned through him. I'm not going to show it on screen. If you want some Lightwave love, go check out Hold and Modify. He's got a whole section on it. So that's Lightwave, and it does function fine. Remember, this isn't Windows 11. It's not uh, the fastest uh, supercomputer of 2023. This is an homage to an emulation of a machine from the 90s. Now, for your D-Paints, guys, choose a resolution that is an Amiga resolution, like a NTSC PAL high-res, high-res laced. It's not going to work in 1920 by 1080. Remember, again, 1993. Host run fun. What in the heck is host run fun? Host run fun is a term that is the term. Uh, VLC. I made some demos for you here. Double cursor. VLC player is going to load. Play some MP3s. Whatever you got. MP4s. You got some DivX stuff or some 264, 265 encoding. It'll play it. Chrome, of course, is the Chrome down here. Right there. Firefox, of course, is the Firefox right there. Windows open up nice and neat. Linux terminal. Are you sure? NeoFetch. Yes, we are running Debian 11, 64-bit on a Raspberry Pi 400 that has been up for 51 minutes, 2.2 gigahertz. Yep, we'll get into that too. Your stock is either 1.5 or 1.8. This runs all day, 2.2 gigahertz, and it is wonderful. Pulling Linux apps through, okay? Pulling Linux apps through. Oh, got some stuff in there. Config files and things that I worked on. No big deal. Enjoy it. Now this guy, okay? Host run fun example to edit with JNO Editor. So let's do that together. Utilities, 
Jano Editor. Now I wish this was more modern where I could drag and drop this in, but it's not. So we're going to do open a file and we're going to go up a couple. We got to get to that uh, host run fun directory. You know it. If I'm doing a video, you know it's going off. Sample to edit videos with. And you see how this just simply says host run Firefox. But you get the idea. You can put a Linux command in there. Just copy this icon and you can make some make some icons for yourself. There's a whole boatload of icons in work, graphics, icons, icons, and there's a bunch. And so that's host run fun. And that's what's going to make PyMiga like more of a daily driver. Emulators. Do you like Neo Geo? Well, there they all are. Now, these guys, the sound's working, okay? But they need to be in 16-bit color. PyMiga's in 32 BGRA. And it's a lot of uh, screen resolution changes. Got your normal emulators. You saw the shapeshifter earlier. Scum VM is now on here. Sound's working. Works fine. I played Leisure Suit Larry. You ain't got shape up or slip out for a long time. I also played Zach McCracken in the Alien Mindbenders. So if you guys run into some save games, they're mine. When you're done, quit. Give her a reboot. I like to flush the toilet for the same reason. The modem sound doesn't always happen. It's just nostalgic, and I, I like it when I hear it. Pimega 2.0 was bloatware city. It was kind of like Windows Millennium with the active desktop plus pack and everything bloatware you could put on it. Too many icons, too many menus, too complicated. Click it at the top. Audio, benchmarks, emulators, graphics, host run fun, internet, some shortcuts, tools, utilities, viewers, help. Bingo. Piece of cake. If you want to root through the stuff, go ahead. Games. Your regular run-of-the-mill Pymega 1.5 through 3.0 now games. So that's the overview real quick of Pymega. Let's get into the functionality that's changed. System requirements are 64 gig memory card, Pi 4 or 400. All right, so you're going to need the image. You've probably already downloaded it and 7-zip and I unpacked it. Got some check sums, MD5 sums done on my Ubuntu machine for you fellows out there that like to do that check stuff. You're going to go and launch the Raspberry Pi Imager. You can download this. Choose OS. Scroll all the way to the bottom. Use a custom image. Choose Pymega 3. Choose your storage device. I'm going to choose this, and then I'm going to say write. Now, this generic mass storage is because I am using... A USB card reader. You can use a thumb drive, SSD, your mom, ah. or whatever you like. So I'm choosing that, and I'm hitting write. And I'm going to say yes, because it's going to overwrite it. This will take a little bit of time. We wrote the PyMega image. We're going to click continue, and we're going to say close. Now, I'm not going to remove my card yet. Because see how it just showed up as boot? You can eject and reinsert it, but you don't need to yet. Double click on this, and go into the kick folder. There's no Kickstart ROM in here. But over here on my desktop, I happen to have the ROM from my legally owned Amiga Forever right here from Cloanto. Plus, I have about 38 or 39 Amigas I can grab a ROM from. You can go to AmigaForever.com and download the value edition for $9.95 US monies. Or you can go to the Google Play Store and get the Cloanto Amiga Forever Essentials for only $1.99. The original f ROM files to run on Amiga OS and emulated computers. So that's the one from the Google Play. That's the cheapest. That's just the ROMs. That's all you'll need. But you can get the Amiga Forever Value Edition for $9.95. It's a digital download. And they even list the other Android and the downloadable games and other things you can purchase from them. If you want something newer, you can purchase the newest Amiga ROM from Hyperion-Entertainment.com. There is an index of retailers that sell all of the OS 3.1.4 through 3.2.1. That's your ROMs, and that's how you can get what you're going to need to unlock this. 
If you're going to use a newer ROM, like a 32, 321, 39, 314, you're going to have to copy the Workbench library and the possibly icon library, which will screw the PNG icon file types up from Peter K's current version of the library. So you keep that in mind or just run the 31 A1200 ROM. If you fail to copy a ROM named kick.rom to your slash boot slash kick folder, you will see this message. And if you hit OK, it's going to yell that it can't find this, and that's OK. If you press F12, you will clearly see the ROM is named kick.rom, of course, and it lives in your boot kick folder. It's all in the instructions you're not going to read. So when you're done, simply take that, eject your card, and there we go. Take this right out, put it right in the Raspberry Pi, and give her a boot. And in about 15 or so seconds, there we go. Fires right up. Now, what you're going to want to do the first time you do this, say wow, and F12, and then quit. So we're gonna run in a Rasby config here, and I can't make this bigger, but you can see what it is. We're gonna go to the localization options, locale, and you're gonna set your own locale. Mine, of course, is ENUS UTF-8. I guess I could have just typed an E. Great Britain, you select ENGB UTF-8 by pressing the space bar and then unselecting the other country. Now, mine's already set. There we go, you see the star right there, ENUS UTF-8, in America, where Jesus lives. Now, yeah, I didn't select that, so you're going to go back into the localization options a couple times, time zone keyboard, wireless LAN country if you want. Now, for Wi-Fi, you're going to select that stuff right up here in the old box where mine says, get off my wireless. You'll just see your dude, click it, there's my other one, and put your password in. That's the Wi-Fi. If you plug in Ethernet, that wireless symbol changes to a plug, and that's cool too. When you're done that, you can do this advanced options. This is the important part. Expand the file system. There we go. Would you like to reboot now? Yep. Let's cover hot swap USB, hot swap audio, USB audio, 3.5 mil audio, for this endeavor, right now, I am currently piping the audio out of HDMI directly to OBS Capture. This butt plug looking speaker is, I don't know, HMD, where's the camera? HMDX Bluetooth speaker. I'm also going to unplug everything. We're going to be using the Devoom TiVu, and I'm going to do this live with you. I don't know if the camera's gonna show down to myself, but I also have the Raspberry Pi 4 in the 3D printed case with the OLED display. We're gonna be going into that. I have controllers. I went out a long time ago and bought this Sabrent USB audio thing. It's a microphone, speaker, some buttons for volume. I got it at Micro Center, and it was like seven US dollars, pre-Rona. Then I lost it. Couldn't find it. So I went on eBooger and I bought a Kingwin, same thing, no buttons, for like $10. And then when you buy something, you find your original. So now I have two of them. And what they can do is 3.5 mil audio. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, take the speaker wire, here's my 3.5 millimeter wire, out of my speakers that I show all my videos with. And I'm going to plug it into the USB thing here now since the audio has been coming out of the speakers you're now going to hear it over the actual speakers and the hdmi stuff will go out so i'm going to plug this into my last available port if i can squeeze it in here i got to unplug something controller's got to come out i'm just too too fat here all right so i have this blue light that popped up and it's blinking I needed to quit Amaberry. See this audio mixer thing here? Well, it says built-in digital stereo. 
audio adapter. There we go. Now I'm on the right adapter. So now I'm on Launch by Amiga again. And I'm just going to hit F12. Go into sound. And there we go. That's my adapter. I forgot to select it in Linux. And we're going to hit resume and the audio should come over my speakers. Turn them on. Whoop, too loud. You heard the Pymega. I'm just going to play a music mod when it loads to show you it's running off. It'll start blinking. So I'm going to hold this pizza up. You can look right here on this blinky thing. And I'm going to click uh, Eagle. To show you it is it. There we go. Plug it back in. Hot swap. I didn't have to reboot the whole system. Power button. Okay. So that's that. I'm unplugging the whole thing, right? Now the reason, oh my god, tangled up. The reason I went to the Linux side and selected it is because if you're gonna host run fun and run YouTube, well Amaberry would have the audio, but Firefox and Chrome on host run fun would not because they you know use the Linux side. So they need this to be told, hey Linux, do that. Here is a USB device. It's a Memorex uh, 16 gig. It's just got some ADF stuff on, which we're going to get into that too. Now I'm going to plug this in. I'm not going to quit. Oh, I'm going to switch my audio back. Built in. That's the HDMI. Okay. Now I'm doing nothing. I'm just going to launch Eagle again. And I can't hear this, but apparently it's playing because I see the Vox meter moving. So that's back to HD DMI audio. USB. Plugging in USB in the Pi 400. There it is. Red thing. Didn't mean to flick you off. Up here in the corner. Watch. See that? That means the USB device is ready. That's the planar thing again. Double click on USB. You're not going to see nothing. Once again, right click. View all files. You'll see your thumb drive. And then just open her up like normal. It should view all the files. If you're not seeing stuff view all files and I actually snapshotted mine because I wanted to remember that for the future so unfortunately I can't snapshot this I don't know why it doesn't always work when you're done simply pull this out and you're good you can use that to drag and drop files transfer stuff from another device that's cool Chris what about Bluetooth Drop out of Pi Amiga here. I'm going to turn on the Davoom TV. There we go. I'm going to make sure it's in Bluetooth. There's Bluetooth. At the top here, I'm going to go up to this Bluetooth. I already paired it, probably. Watch. I'm going to go to Devices here. That's HDMX Neutron. So we're going to go to Search. Whoops, I clicked the wrong thing. <laughs> yep, I connected my iPhone. I'm going to turn my Bluetooth off on my iPhone. Okay, apparently I have like 8 million Bluetooth devices in my house. I'm pretty sure this is it. It's this one. I'm going to pair this. All right, there we go. We're going to say... I don't know what that said. Accept. Okay, so with that, cool. Always accept. And we can even trust this. So I'm going to say trust. It's a little golden arrow. So here's the dude in my hand, right? I'm going to go up here to this. It should automatically set up. Audio devices. TV audio. Okay, we're going to launch Pi Amiga. Now, again, I'm going to have to hit F12. Because that part isn't auto. And we're going to say sound and TV audio. Cool, huh? Bluetooth sound. Now we're going to launch... Oh, there we go. Cool, huh? Look. I still love it. I don't care. So now if I launch a music mod on this. Well, it's got cuss words in it. To show you that it's Bluetooth, I'll turn it off. There we go. Disconnected. You see the thing up the top there? Go back to Bluetooth. In a few minutes, it would reconnect. But there it goes. It just reconnected. But the emulator 
can't do a reconnection. So you'd have to quit and relaunch it. And then again, because I did not save my config for that pickup, I would have to pick it again. And then it would start. There we go. There's some other covers. And, you know, you're not going to be flipping them. So once you get it sorted, you'll be, yeah, you'll be good. So TVU. And then it would have played. And I can do, I can check that by just running web browser without running Pymega. And it'll run a lot faster too. That's a pretty loud meatball. Holy. So. So yeah, that was that's that. I turned it off. This is a dollar store uh, HDMX Neutron. I'm gonna turn this on. There we go. I previously I previously paired it so it automatically connected. So in theory, I can just select it as the preferred audio device, HDMX Neutron. Launching Pymega. I'm gonna select this as the audio. Now I could save the config if I wanted to, but this is just for example, HDMX Neutron. Hoo Cool effect, huh? So that's that and that works. I'm turning this off and I can go back and I can select my speaker back to the built-in HDMI audio, which I can't hear because it's through OBS. Controllers work the same way. PlayStation 5 controllers pair just fine. Xbox One controllers pair just fine. Xbox 360 controllers I have to plug in because they're Wi-Fi, not Bluetooth. Your controller has to be a Bluetooth controller in order to pair. Okay, keep that in mind. I'm not rebooting, by the way. I'm just plugging it in. Remember, USB is all hot swappable. I'm going to hit F12, and I'm going to go down here to this controller's input thing. Input for port 1. There we go. SFC controller. And if I wanted to, I could go into customize the controls. That's a controller. I have my PS5 controller mapped. Well, I had it mapped, but then I rehooked up to my PlayStation 5. So I'm not going to do that again. This is a Raspberry Pi 4, all right? This is all custom, okay? This is Thingiverse. You can do this. This is an I2C uh, screen. I'm going to hold this up to the screen so you can see what's going on. So watch hard drive lights. Check that out. Pi Mega booting. Hard drive. Starting Amaberry. Ooh. And then when the desktop loads, which I'll flip to in a second, it says Pi Mega. And the Pi Amiga logo. And you're going to see some scrolling effects. Now, this one has already been expanded. It's the same thing. You want to play some music mods? Play them. Love it. And the hard drive light flickers. And this is a custom case for a Raspberry Pi 4. Right here gets hot. Because the only ventilation we're getting is this hole. And the vents. Let me turn this off before I break it. Vents in the back and this hole. Well, that's great. That's some... That's some flow, right? I just blew on the screen. This guy can be the source for your SD card. I have mine on a long ribbon. It corrupted every card I put in there. So I just leave her in the slot. Samsung 128 gig. When I stuck this down flat, you can tell by these things, it it's solid, gets no air. I'm going to have to kind of make some modifications for some holes. And I got some other fans on order. It's a, uh, it's, I'll have, I'll have a video coming out on this thing exactly itself soon. What we're going to do is we're going to do a boot off of ADF. I like this. I'm a joystick guy for when I do joysticks. So I'm just going to do this joystick. This is the C64 joystick F12. I didn't save my configs because I never do. Input. Drop this down to, there we go, C64 joystick. I could click config and save i'm going to go to the floppy drive click this three dots right here and i'm going to go to pi mega whoops adf and i'm going to click miss pac-man reset what's going to happen is it's going to boot miss pac-man it should boot miss pac-man if my cam link so now i can just press the button and we're playing miss pac-man Go get me, sucker. 
Oh yeah. Uh oh. Oh yeah. Pop your cherry. All right. So when you're done F12, you can simply click eject and then reset, and you're back at your Pi Mega desktop. And that's how you boot ADFs, play ADF games, use ADF utilities, stuff like that, and you're back in action. It boots really quick. I left this as not forced, so it's on demand, so it will shut down. See how the, the gigahertz is, is real low? Now I'm at one. Well, it's 2.2. And if I nail her balls to the wall, she's going to be 2.2. That's why I don't do a force overclock, because it changes the governor to performance. And that's fine. But if you're just sitting there idling and listening to music mods, you don't need 2,200 megahertz. You can run off a third of that. So we're going to type sudo, my favorite word. That's how you get what you want, guys. Sudo. Uh, nano text editor slash boot slash config dot txt when you get here scroll all the way to the bottom i can't make this any bigger but you just have to trust me there we go see where it says overclock this you know what unhashed don't exceed 2300 on a pi 400 or 2100 on a pi 4 your results will bear will vary now if i wanted the cores to be forced to maximum megahertz at all times i would just unhash this it turns white but I'm leaving mine, boop, hashed out. I just do the arm frequency, 2200. If I wanted it 18, if I wanted it stock, I just put a hash in front of this. Now, by default, yours is going to be, whoops, yours is going to look like this because I left it not overclocked. There were so many compatibility problems between pies around the world. That is up to you. So start it off small and slowly creep her up. If you get a lightning bolt, you're overheating or you got a weird power supply, or you're overheating, and shut her down. Control X, yes, enter, and then sudo reboot, and you can restart that, and you're done. But wait, Chris, there's another icon on your desk. Yes. Mega AGS is still there. Double click on that. Million dollar boys, same as Pi Mega 2. You would have to F12 and change it. You can do that, but F12 quit. Double click on the icon from your desktop. There you go. It's playable by a controller. So let's see. Great Gianna sisters. Is that it? G. Oh, Ghosts and Goblins. Golden Axe. When you're done, F12 and either go to Pi Mega 3, double click it, or quit and launch Pi the Mega. icon on the desktop. Pretty cool, huh? Common question I get all the time. Chris, your backdrops are good, but I want to put my own backdrop on that's four color and looks like total garbage. I know you worked your butt off to get this ironed out, but I don't give a crap. That's fine. I want to go over backdrops with you real quick. So this is backdrops. Backdrops have now been categorized into things that are legible. There's no more of this and double something and weird. It's backdrops. You want colors? Click colors. And you get colors. If you want mixed, click mixed. Every backdrop you get, you're going to get a mixed random assortment. And let's see. Backdrops, pictures, which is what I'm on by default, or nature. And of course, from Pimega 2.0, Commodore backdrops randomized, whatever you want. But what I first do is I choose a category I hate, like colors, okay? Once it flips the colors, that's the one I'm gonna show you on so you don't destroy all the work I did, which was a pain in the butt. Go into Scalos and then Pattern. It's gonna bring up all of the things in that palette choice, which was the colors, okay? See the colors? Color, 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 color. Just go through here and start deleting them. Now you're going to click New Pattern, and you're going to browse with the little file browser menu down here to where your pattern is, and then you're going to say Save. And that's how you make your own backdrop be that. Now, you can expand on the menus and add yours to those menus so they're randomized. So there's a lot of backdrops in there. It's up to you. 
This is a drawbridge from Rob Smith. It allows you to use floppy disks with the uh, um, yep, emulators or your computer to, all I have is Amiga test kit. I have a sysinfo, uh, to use real double-sided double density disks with your device. I'm gonna plug this in here. You probably heard that. Burp, 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 burp. Oh, Marty and Pony Amiga. Okay, so I'm gonna say F2 or F12, sorry. And under floppy drives here, see this at the top? Watch this. I'm gonna do compatible, right? All right, and I'm gonna say reset. I'm gonna hold this up to the camera. Put it on top of the microphone. You hear that clicking? You hear that? This is sysinfo. It's gonna pop up right over here on the left. Holy bar mitzvah, Batman. I'm using a real floppy drive on Pymega. Are you asking me? No. You're listening to it live. Is it fast? About as fast as floppy is on a real Amiga. Sorry for the extra microphone. Just got to prove it. There you go. I toned this down a little bit too. Yeah, 1137, 181 MIPS. You're still rocking along faster than you ever could on a real Amiga. So we have the drawbridge. Grease Weasel is in there too. Go into here. And when you plug your Grease Weasel in, which I don't know where mine is, you can do GW info and it would say, hey, oh, Grease Weasel's not found. But if you have a Grease Weasel, plug it in. You're going to configure it the same way through uh, the Amaberry emulator. Updates. How do I update Amaberry? Good question. If you look in the README, it tells you how to do it. You can also download pre-compiled binaries from uh, using the Linux side or PyMiga with a host run. And right here, you click on Amaberry. You can download pre-compiled binaries for the SDL2 64-bit, which is your Raspberry Pi 400. If you have an Orange Pi 800, that new thing that stole the name from Pi 400, Pi 500, whatever they're calling it, you can download one's pre-compiled binaries from this page for all of the different models of Pi. So you're not just, you know, you can be a Mac, and I'm not spoiling Pi Mega 4, but it might run on a PC. No more Raspberry Pis, and it might not need an operating system. I'm not saying too much because it's still real early, but it's going to be flipping epic. So that's all I got for Pi Mega 3. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me for the day. I greatly appreciate it. If you find this interesting and you kind of like it and you want to help a brother out, there's a super thanks button somewhere there. It looks like a Superman. You can click that. Uh, I would prefer PayPal. It's on the About Me page of the old YouTube thing we're in right now. If you click About Me, there's links for my support. And I. it's not required, okay? You don't have to donate to me. You don't have to do a thing. You can flick me off, click the download button, and never do anything, and that's fine. But if you, you know, if you appreciate it, I would appreciate it. I'm not begging. You don't have to. It's totally free. Now listen, here's something new. I have a United States registered trademark on PyMiga. It is a uh, word name and logo. Do I own the software inside? Never said I did. If you look at the trademark, it's a downloadable operating system and the copyright is on the word name and logo. So you can't sell PyMiga on the old websites anymore because it's already been submitted. I have a legal trademark. That covers my address out of the way. There you go. There's the number. Yeah, it's in there somewhere. I can't get that quite right. So there's the number in class 9. Downloadable operating system. The mark consists of the character, logo, and font, and style, size, and color, and word name. By Amiga. And there's a bunch of legal, legal stuff in here about my attorney and all the money that I spent to get this. You know, like Dr. Chris and the ghost of J Minor, who hasn't called me in a while. 
We all thank you, and on behalf of my beta testers, myself, Mona, and B-Dog, and the kid upstairs, we hope you have a wonderful holiday season, and enjoy Pi Amiga. If you're interested, there's a Discord link in the About Me page for Pi Amiga. It's all open. You can come join, hang out, ask questions, or just chat, and we like to talk about all sorts of random stuff, from Amigas, to food, to 3D printing, and everything else in between. So... Have a happy holiday, everybody. I wish you the best, and we'll see you in 2023. Well, you'll see me in a little while, too, but we'll continue on. So, as always, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.